So we're going to switch gears a little bit. Not quite so technical. I got a simple question for you. Is this your mud? The idea I'm going to put forth today is Harvey Mudd is a great liberal arts college. So unlike Mark, I'm OK with questions. Now, any reaction to that? So why are we a liberal arts college? Why are we, why are we ranked as a liberal arts college? Because that's where we fit. <laughs> and it's not much more complex like, than that. So when you see a rating that says these colleges just are rated this way, we're a liberal arts college because that's the best fit for us. So it's not an issue. I don't think anybody should worry about it. But certainly, I don't consider it a liberal arts college. It's a little different than one. But anyway, when we were freshmen, we had a classmate by the name of Bob Wolf. Some of you may remember. And Bob and I and others used to spend a lot of time, because we were 18, extremely wise, knew a lot. And we would debate what's good for Harvey Mudd. And we'd take all of our built up wisdom and we'd come up with, with our opinions and after a raging debate, we'd say, oh yeah, this is good for Harvey Mudd or not. So a question that I'm gonna ask is, is the Harvey Mudd that we see in 2019 a good Harvey Mudd? And I, I, I do hope that somebody will come back and say, well, yes or no, but let's talk a little bit. So I, I got a couple of things I'll talk about. One is, the first thing is, I'm going to try to give you a rationale why you might want to listen to me. That's a tough one. <laughs> and then I've got some stats on what Harvey Mudd looks like. And finally, I'm going to just give you some of my thoughts on what it's like to be a mudder right now. So why should you listen to me? The obvious answer is I'm a nice guy. You remember, remember me fondly. And so you just want to listen to me, right? OK. Actually, I'm just a retired financial guy. I'm not a student. I'm not a faculty member. I'm not part of the administration. So I'm certainly not a scientist. I worked in finance my whole life. So what do I know about a college focused on STEM? I'm going to rely on my five years of board experience and tell you that I'm actually pretty engaged. So I think I know a little bit. Now, that means one of two things to you. I'm actually somewhat of an expert, or I'm totally clueless, depending on your point of view. If you don't think the, the board of Harvey Mudd knows what they're doing, then I'm probably clueless. If you go the clueless route, then you can at least have some comfort that Wayne Drinkwork, who's class ahead of us is the chairman of the board. And if you look around, you see Wayne and Julie Drinkward recital hall. You see a, he's got a dorm. So he's got to be, he's got to have some, something on the ball to have that kind of stuff. And I think the other element is Maria Clave. She's been the president for, I think, 12 years. And I think Wayne and Maria together have done a lot to push the campus in a different direction. But I'm going to advocate that it's a good direction. So let's look a little bit at what Harvey Mudd looks like today. Just some demographic data. I'll give you a moment to digest it. I think probably the first thing you'll, the first line you read, 416 students versus 889. Now that's been, a, I think, a debate for as long as Harvey Mudd's existed is what size we should be. We're still growing a little bit each year. Um, do I think 889 is a magic number? Probably not. But I'm not sure I know what a magic number is. And I think it's probably something we're going to talk about uh, over the next couple of years. 197 graduating seniors. We had 77. And in fact, in fact I think our year had the highest percentage of graduates of the entering class of any class up to that point. Now the graduation rates are in the 90s. And the philosophy is a little different, that we want students to graduate when they come in. I think we all, they always wanted students to graduate, but quite a few fell by the wayside. And I think one of the things that, that the school is doing is try to keep the ones that fall by the wayside to a minimum. Now, one piece that is real different is the 
binary demographic of women versus men. In our day, it was a very dominant male student body. Right now, it's basically a 50-50 environment. And the 2019 data is a binary classification of gender. There are students at Harvey Mudd who don't identify strongly with either. And they're part of the community, they're welcome here. But I think that's a difference than what it was in 1974. If you look further at some of the groups, there's 3% African American in 2019. 20% Hispanic, 19% Asian. We don't have a number for Asian from our year because they didn't keep the record. So I, I can't give you that number. But I will tell you that if you come, excuse me? <laughs> well, we could certainly count the black students because I think they were, there were very few of them, and we could probably count, count, count all the women because there weren't that many women. But, but I think if you, if you look at this, you might say, well, 2019 is different, but it might actually be good. And that's, that's again, what I'm going to advocate. So what, what's being studied? And quite honestly, this is, when I got this data last week, it's the first time I'd seen it, and I'd heard all this stuff about, oh, CS is just dominating Harvey Mudd. Well, there's 20% CS majors, and there's 21% joint CS and math, but that's what the students are, are choosing. That's just what they want to study. In fact, Claremont, CMC's students are overwhelming our CS classes because those students want CS also. They're not going to get a degree in CS, but they want to understand CS so they can work and be more functional when they have to deal with it. One of the issues on campus right now is that the pure sciences, chemistry, physics, math, I'll call it a science, um, biology, we don't have many majors. And so the question becomes, well, how many profs do we want to teach in chemistry if we only have 5% majors? But if you think about the core, where everybody takes the same classes and get the gets the basic building blocks of a Harvey Mudd education, you're going to have to have chemists. And so that's a, a continual a debate back and forth. The faculty, certainly in the, the disciplines that don't have many majors, are kind of wondering how long that's going to last. But it's a reality right now. One of the numbers I was really surprised at is that the 39% engineering. And I had thought with CS coming in, the engineering numbers had fallen off. But they're actually higher than they were in 74. So this is, uh, to me, it's different, again, than what we saw. But I would say, well, it looks like it's pretty good. And I actually think um, we're being responsive. We have to be responsive to what the students want, or they won't come here. So having CS have that kind of a role is probably the right thing to do. Now, if you, if you look at this and then you say, okay, now we have a Harvey Mudd graduate. So you guys are all Harvey Mudd graduates. You've dealt with various reactions in when you worked, when you studied, when you went to school f for further degrees. And generically, Harvey Mudd students are looked at as being very good. You bring them into a company, they do very well. And that's historically the way it's been, and I think it's that way now. The current graduates, some go on and get advanced degrees, just like in our class. In the job market, our, our graduates are very in very high demand. And probably something new is there's a lot of startups coming from Harvey Mudd grads. And there's, there's grads that have only been out 10 years that are, have started a company, and they're, they're bringing lots of money in, and they're doing things that not many in our class did. So again, I'd say it's a different piece, but I think what's going on is actually pretty good. Lastly, I'd like you to think about what it's like to be a mudder now. And I, I have to say, I come to school for board meetings three or four times, depending on how many I attend. And 10 o'clock in the morning, you see this more balanced group of people. Not just students, but faculty. There's been a big effort to try to broaden the number of groups that are represented. And the reason for that, 
And it's the same reason I think it's good in business, is you get more ideas. You've got people from different backgrounds and you get more ideas. So I think it's more comfortable for me to see a balanced group. I'm, you know, I thought it was kind of weird when 92% of our class was male. Um, I think it's, uh, you go from that and then you go out in the world and it's really different. So I think we're preparing our students better for going out in the world because the demographics have changed. A big change in the administration and the way the schools run is that once students come into the school, there's more of an effort to help them succeed. Now, again, I've heard from some of, some of our classmates, they said, well, why are we doing all that? Why are we spending money for counselors? Why are we uh, doing a lot of tutoring? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Well, the fact is, everybody comes into the to Harvey Mudd with different backgrounds. Now, when we were at, at Harvey Mudd in 1970, some of our classmates didn't have the same background in high school that most of us had, and they struggled more. So what Harvey Mudd is tr trying to do is, if we have those students, try to help them get up to speed in the summer before they get here, or put them on a pro help them get on a program where they can still be successful. So one of the one of the greatest success stories I've heard about that is a guy who graduated last year. And he came into MUD, and after the first semester of sophomore year, he flunked out. ITR had gone. And he said, wow. So he went to Cal Poly Pomona. And he made up the classes he flunked, got back in, and he was able to graduate in five years. And he told me one of the ways he was able to graduate was he didn't take a full course load some semesters when he thought the classes were going to be real tough and he wanted to succeed. And the school was all right with that. I don't know if that was allowed when we were, in, when we were here. I, I don't think it was, but I, I, I don't. I actually think, and then, then this, he graduated, he got a job, he's out there earning money, he's supporting himself. I think it's a success story. And I, and I think Harvey Mutter's don't like a lot of change sometimes, and they say, well, that, doesn't that cheapen the degree? Doesn't that make it uh, so this guy's not as qualified? Actually, when he graduated, he was, he was very, when he graduated, he was very qualified, and he was able to, to go out and get a good job and be successful. And I think that's a big piece of what Harvey Mudd's trying to do as we move forward. So our demographics have changed. Um, that's intentional. The admissions office, uh, and actually the faculty, the faculty at will at times make phone calls to prospective students to try to get them to come. Um, and then they get this whole bunch of students together and you saw the cost on the previous slide, 75 grand to come to, come to college. So how do, you, how do they do it? How do we get uh, 900 kids to pay 75 grand? A lot more money around. And it's, it's surprising how much money there is. And I honestly don't think we turn away a student because they can't pay anymore. And it's, it's amazing. I don't, I, I don't go into the admissions process and I don't deal with financial aid, but somehow those two offices get together and they work some kind of magic and the whole class is able to come in and they're able to fund it one way or another. I, I think you know the loans are a little overbearing. I think there's some students that leave here with a lot of loans that are pretty tough to, to deal with, but uh, I think we're helping kids and we're, we're educating people in STEM and, and helping uh, them go up and be successful in the world. So my view, I think we're a high quality, quality college and we're producing top grads just like we always did. So to close, I just, I know some of this may be repetitive, some of it may be new, but I hope it interests you and that when you read about something that's going on at the college and you don't understand it, you try to figure it out and, and understand it better. And I, I'll tell you, I, I think most trustees are really willing to talk to people because we want the alumni to support the school. So I'll give you a challenge. When things don't look like they make sense to you, ask a question.
I'll close with that, and I'll probably use my time up, so I probably shouldn't take questions.